Good afternoon, I'm Staff Sergeant Bruce Walker uh, with the Calgary Police Service Sex Crimes Unit, B-R-U-C-E-W-A-L-K-E-R. -E Today, the Calgary Police Service is pleased to announce that we are partnering with five different agencies to help ensure that sexual assault allegations reported to us are thoroughly investigated. The agencies will be meeting with us regularly as part of a case review committee that will take a second look at sexual offense cases that investigators have closed as unfounded. While private information and identities will not be shared with the committee, they will have access to all other details in the files and will walk through every step of the investigations that occurred. This committee will offer advice on whether an investigation could be improved to ensure that we have done as thorough of an investigation as possible. The committee members will also be able to suggest ways our training, policies, and procedures can be improved to help better serve the victims of sexual offenses. The committee members we have invited to join the committee have long been leaders in our city when it comes to supporting victims of sexual offenses, both for adults and children. We are excited to have them share with their expertise and experience with us to help us provide the best service we can to those affected by sexual crimes. Calgary already has a significantly lower average rate of sexual cases that are closed as unfounded, which is a testament to our members and the work that we do every day. Our hope with this new committee is that we are able to improve an already successful work along with our members th in which they are doing. Thank you. I would like now to turn over to Daniel Obrey, CEO of Calgary Communities Against Sexual Abuse. Thank you, Bruce. Um, as Bruce said, my name is Danielle Obrey, A-U-B-R-Y. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Calgary Communities Against Sexual Abuse, or CASA. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming to today's media event. I would like to thank the Calgary Police Service for showing great leadership and moving quickly to look at the unfounded rate in Calgary and for looking at the implementation of a model that welcomes expert external community input. For over 20 years, the staff at Calgary Communities Against Sexual Abuse have worked with the Calgary Police Service, street personnel, the Child Abuse Unit, and the Sex Crimes Unit in meeting our mission of supporting individuals and families who have experienced various forms of sexual, sexual violence. This has resulted in the building of a level of mutual trust and respect for each other that provides a stronger basis for being able to manage our professional relationships on a day-to-day -day basis and ultimately, and most importantly, provides a better service to those impacted by sexual violence. This hard work by our two organizations has helped bring us to where we are today. A place where CASA has been asked to help develop a process that will respectfully allow for the collaborative review of sex crimes files that have been deemed to be unfounded. By including external partners such as CASA, it gives the opportunity to give our experienced and knowledgeable input. The Philadelphia model, as Bruce mentioned, has been around for over 17 years and it brings together very specifically frontline sexual assault service providers to examine police files. It is a best practice model and has been reviewed by several professionals in Ottawa, including Sonny Mariner from the Ottawa Rape Crisis Centre and Dr. Teresa Scassa from the Canada Research Chair in Information Law, who have respectively researched best practice review process processes as related to unfounded cases and the privacy implications of such. From CASA's perspective, there are a few things that we would like the public to know. One is that our staff have a tremendous amount of expertise dealing with all forms of sexual violence and the effects of sexual violence related trauma. That we work in the, with the issue every day, day in and day out from an education, counseling and crisis intervention standpoint. We feel honored to have been chose, chosen to be part of this committee and look forward to working with the other community partners as well as the Calgary Police Service. CASA recognizes that the content of these police files are in part the very personal stories of people, people from our community who have sought help from the police. We take this responsibility very, very seriously and will handle this with the utmost res respect and care. Thank you. Any questions? How yeah. long, how far back are you guys going to be looking at these unfounded uh, cases? Are you reviewing previous ones? 
Yes, we uh, went back to 2012 and reviewed approximately 175 cases uh, of unfounded over the five-year period, um, which we can provide stats to that effect to you guys afterwards, if that's okay. The committee will be from this point forward. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. starting, sorry, starting January of this year, uh, the committee will meet um, for files from January until present date. Did your review of those cases from 2012 till now, I said, um, play a role in you know taking this route uh, and approaching your partners to do this? Well, I think uh, with uh, we're, we're we're constantly looking for efficient ways. Um, we can always do things better, and uh, I've been attached now to this unit now for about three and a half months. And in looking at some of the best practices, um, the recent media that uh, has gone out with regards to the unfounded uh, um, stat pooling, I guess we'll call it, uh, we look at how we can do uh, more efficient, because in the end, while all three of us have separate uh, roles, when we talk about CSAR, CASA, um, and the Calgary Police Service, we look at, at the end, it's, it's about the victim and what we can do for them. Yeah, so when we looked at the files, we realized that uh, uh, as a, a training point that uh, the coding uh, was, was not accurate for the file. So we actually assigned uh, a former investigator from our sex crimes unit to relook at all those files to see um, how they were closed. And in doing that, and we'll provide the stats after, and I don't want to say the number, um, it's around 47, were recoded um, that should have been inactive because at the time there was not enough evidence to proceed with the investigation. By taking a look at these again, what do you think that might do for women maybe to come, who are hesitant to come forward? Do you think this lead them to come forward? Um, in in my, my experience, uh, again, I would, uh, I would hope, because we encourage people to come forward, and by making this process a lot more efficient and uh, Say it. Make it more victim friendly that they, they would feel more comfortable coming forward, that we're actually uh, making it more efficient for them and uh, making it more about the victim. That's all I really can say about it. When we're trying to explain to our audiences tonight, maybe people who didn't read you know, the Global Mail articles, can you explain this whole idea of what unfounded, what the characterization of that is, and how you're saying that it's, in some cases have now been reclassified to a different code? So when we look at, uh, from a policing perspective, we look at an unfounded file. Um, if somebody makes an allegation uh, through a criminal investigation, we have evidence to uh, sort of contradict what uh, was said. Um, we, we would then look at the file. If that evidence then obviously supports, uh, then the complaint would be then classified as unfounded. Does that answer your question? Kind of. And how does Calgary stack up looking across the country? So we look at our, our uh, st statistical breakdown, and we, we're uh, at around 10% for the unfounded rates. Uh, I'd be provincially, uh, I think we're sitting at around 18%. Normally, isn't it about 2 to 8%? Though? 2 to 8%. Uh, again, I guess uh, scholastics would say, education persons would say that uh, within 2 to 8% is probably the acceptable range for unfounded complaints. So again, by ha forming this committee, uh, we tend to look at from uh, January 1st of this year moving forward that we would relook at all these unfounded files to be sure that everything had been done and if it uh, wasn't com completed in a thorough fashion, then we would look at ways of uh, retasking that investigation out to be completed. What kinds of stuff can that maybe wasn't done? What kinds of things can you talk about? What things may not be done? Well, looking at the files, uh, you can, you know, if, uh, if a witness statement got missed, uh, if a piece of evidence got overlooked. Um, could be a, uh, could be a host of things. Some people might look at this as a, doing things twice. Um, can you explain the benefit of that? And because you know people see it as a time and money um, thing sometimes. From a community perspective. From a community perspective, people might see it as, oh, you know, we're doing things twice, um, investigating things twice. If you have to review each uh, file, each unfounded file, can you explain okay. why that's beneficial. Yeah, and I would assume if we looked at all of our files and we even find one file where we have done a disservice to a victim of sexual violence, and if we can make that right by completing a thorough investigation, 
uh, that you know if, if, if the file does end up leading to potential charges then I think we've done a service to the community because that's what we're here for. I don't know this might be a question for you but uh, in terms of the victims having to go through this process potentially twice as well um, you know I assume they would go through interviews and then would then again if their file was looked at and would need to go through those interviews again what kind of impact can that have on somebody is there a potential risk that they would want to then drop their case um, too painful to go through twice well I think uh, reliving the experience in any form or fashion would be uh, would cause some trauma to the victim um, certainly there would be communication from the investigator with the victim um, potentially if there were some uh, shortfalls in the investigation and then that, that would have to be by case by case. And we would certainly look to our partners for that support for that victim. And I think, I don't want to speak for Stan, no, yes, but. Have you just step towards the mic, please? Thank you. And correct me if I'm incorrect, Bruce, but um, from my years of experience, uh, the Sex Crimes Unit and, and is very interested in, in allowing people to make that choice as to whether or not they go forward. So I would suspect that that would be the same for this case, that there would, you know, there wouldn't be any forcing of, of uh, people to go through a process, particularly years after they have reported. So that's correct. Daniel, your, your quote here talks about the rate of unfounded cases as something that needs to be addressed. Is that something, mm -hmm. have you spoken to people personally who've been in that situation where they say that something's happened to them, but you know, on paper it says unfounded, and how do they feel? You know, like, uh, you know, I've been working in this field for 20, almost 30 years. And so, yes, it's definitely we've come across that. I think that quote is really speaking to the fact that sexual assault services ac across this country have, have, have talked to people in that regard over the years. We've known that this has been a problem. Um, and so moving forward, you know, it's, it's, um, it's amazing that we're here at this point today where uh, there is openness in the community to to revisit some of the files. So yes, I mean definitely over over the years, you know, sexual assault centers have known this. The Global Mail did a wonderful job at presenting it, but it's something that we've known for many many years. Do the times have changed a little bit? People are, are more understanding. But do you think that maybe for some of those victims, they may be for them, it may be easier for them to talk about, and maybe if they give more evidence than maybe they did before, they maybe they're really before about it. Sorry, can you? I, can, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm wondering whether because um, we're talking a lot more about these these days than say 50, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. that maybe for those victims it may be easier for them to talk about, which may allow them to remember something or some other details that were not come up before. Mm -hmm. I would. I don't know about the detail piece. Um, I think that what I can speak to is the fact that. Um, you know, people all go through a process of, of healing or trying to deal with a sexual assault that has happened to them. And uh, it may be that some individuals might be in a better place to, um, to talk about it again. There may be some people that are just not able to engage in this process again. It's very possible. Right? Successes in terms of uh, you know well, cases mean, that they've reopened or yeah, has that been a, a common theme? Um, I mean, the point is to see if there are cases to be opened. Has yeah. that been something that has happened in the areas that have adopted this? My understanding, I don't know firsthand, but my understanding from from Sunny in Ottawa is that yes, you know, uh, and and in, so there's very little literature on the on the Philadelphia model and what they've done but they've been doing it for 17 years so my assumption is that very much that they are having some success and um, and you know the reality is is that this builds in a different level of accountability um, for the police that they've never had before um, and again timing is everything and uh, you know that's why I am extremely happy that that the CPS is taking this leadership role because it's um, it's a big step, you know, it's a big step and it's a, it's a uh, different way of doing things. And so the fact that Calgary, I think, is probably the biggest, you know, the, uh, uh, the first big centre in, in Canada to do this, I'm quite proud of that.